In today's show, we're diving deep into your questions. I'll be doing some Q&A today. This is going to be good and fun. So let's go. This is for the change makers and rain makers that are known for their leadership in business, their community, and the world. This is for those smart, classy ladies that can hold their ground in the boardroom, but still know how to have fun and live life to its fullest. Get ready to prioritize what matters most, maximize your potential, and experience the joy of owning a business that enables you to thrive. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode number 43 of the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. Yours truly here, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison, your certified leading business coach. And I am so excited that you are listening to today's episode because today we're diving all into your questions, your Q&A for the podcast. So I can't wait to dive in. Listen, be sure that you subscribe to the show and leave a quick review on iTunes. That helps so many more people find the show so that they too can get this knowledge, wisdom, and advice and help them take their lives to the top. So I would absolutely appreciate if you just hop on over to iTunes, subscribe, and leave a review as well so that more people can find the show. Also, don't forget about the upcoming live event of the year. It is the Thrive Summit. Depending on when you're listening to this, the Thrive Summit is August 1st and 2nd, 2019. Now you can get all the registration details right at Giovanna.com forward slash summit. I will make sure to leave a link in the show notes so that you can go on over and read all about the Thrive Summit, see who it's for, and so that you can come on out and take your life and your business to the next level. So let's get right into the content. I am so excited about today's show, like I said earlier, because it's important to me that I keep my ear close to your questions and also so that I can feel the heartbeat of my audience, which is you. So I'm going to go into some questions that listeners submit and I can't wait to dive into these. So Winston asked, if you could go back and coach yourself when you were at the very start of this journey, what one to three pieces of advice would you give to the earlier version of yourself as a beginning coach? Now, Winston, that is a great question and I am so happy to address it. So I'm going to give you three things. Number one is slow down. You know, building a business is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It is a marathon. And, you know, when I say that word, I've got to honor the life and legacy of Nipsey Hussle because, yeah, that's my former stumping ground and I'm from that area. And so I just honor his life and legacy. But it's not a sprint. It is a marathon, meaning that we are in this for the long haul. And I remember when I first started, my goodness, it felt like it was just sprinting everywhere. But my business started to grow faster and started to do so much better when I slowed down and realized that this is a marathon. Number two, don't accept everyone as a client, regardless of if they have the money. They also need to have emotional intelligence. So that one is super important because, you know, a lot of coaches just starting out, sometimes they'll just say yes to any and everything, but you've got to be careful with that. And you've got to make sure that not only is the client, you know, a good fit for you, but that you're a good fit for the client, vice versa. There's nothing wrong with referrals. I remember (laughs) when I first started, um, the person who was coaching me sent me some referrals. My goodness, that definitely stretched me and definitely grew me. But if I had it to do over again, you know, I may have said, yeah, thank you for the referral, but I'll pass on that one. (laughs) And so it's so wise. It's good to, you know, stretch and grow, but realize that not everyone is going to be the right fit. And you also want to work with clients who are, you know, enjoyable, who are high profit and low maintenance. You don't want it the other way around where they are low profit and high maintenance, right? You want the ones that are enjoyable to work with. Number three is don't create too many products at once. You know, you can you can amplify when you simplify. Uh, you, you've got to do that. You know, have a flagship 
product, one that you are known for. You know, people know me for the Thrive Summit, the Thrive Mastermind and Maximum Potential Academy, helping entrepreneurs start and grow their own business while keeping God first. So refine and make that one product excellent rather than having three or four different products, especially with no team. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine trying to do all of that by yourself? Well, I don't have to imagine it. I can visualize it because that was me (laughs) in the very beginning. My goodness, I was doing everything. And it wasn't until I hired my first administrative assistant that things began to really, you know, it created more time in my life and business. So make sure that you get help and realize that not everything is for you to do. There's a great book that I just got in the mail not not too long ago because he's just launched it, but it's called Free to Focus by Michael Hyatt. And that's a great one for you to dive into as well so that you can cut, automate, eliminate, delegate, all that sort of thing. It's very important that we do that as entrepreneurs. All right. So Janice asked, how do you choose what investments to make in yourself when there are so many great ones out there. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed with opportunities because when I make one, then pops up another one that I feel is needed. I hope this makes sense. Janice, yes, it makes perfect sense. And I have absolutely been where you are. And you know, how I narrowed it down is to really think about who I hire. So, you know, I'm a coach, but yes, I also have a coach. So one of the things that I do is hire someone who is 10 steps ahead of me in their own business. You've got so many people, you know, who are self-proclaimed experts online now. And unfortunately, some people do believe that just because it's on the internet means it's true. And we know that's false, you know. Um, But, you know, a lot of people are teaching things that they have not done themselves. And so if you want to learn from someone, if you want to get the results, make sure that you get someone on board who's at least 10 steps ahead of you in their business. And if someone is only, a, you know, a few steps ahead, then I'm, I'm careful about that investment. And then of course I eliminated the noise. Oh my Lord, there's so much noise out here. I eliminated the noise that I had in my inbox by unsubscribing from certain lists or only checking them, you know, at times that I designated, not when they were in a specific launch or when, you know, somebody needed to make a sale or anything else like that. It's so important that we control when we check in, not when somebody else decides to come and grab your attention. And as entrepreneurs, you're in control of that, right? So it's so important that you dial that in. Now, Nicole asked, Janice, I hope that helps. And anybody else who may have had that same question. Now, Nicole asked, what are some effective ways you have used or heard about to build an email list? So this is a loaded question and one that I love because, you know, you've got to, as you're building your business, you've got to have that strong community and your community is in your email list. It's not enough just to talk to them once. If you want to have a sustainable, recurring, profitable business, you've got to make sure that you've got a strong list. So by far, webinars and an effective landing page have worked the best for me. And even better than that, live events where I'm face to face with the people I serve is what helps. And I want you to remember that there is power in a small list. Don't discount the power of your email list, right? Don't discount that. Because, you know, somebody may say, well, Lady J, I've only got, you know, 25 people on my list. Well, if you took those same 25 people, put them in your living room, then I'm sure you know, you may have to get an extra chair or two out, you know, a whole, or a whole bunch of chairs. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Or if you say, well, Lady J, I don't have a big list. I've only got 500 people on my list. Again, same example. Put those same 500 in your living room. You've got a whole lot of people. So it is so important that you go deep with the people that you already have, right? Don't discount the power of a small list, especially if that small list is a responsive list. Oh my goodness, you can do really well. I've had clients that have had less than 500 people on their email list gone on to build multiple six-figure businesses. Why? Because they nurture that list. All right. So I hope that helps. Anna asked, what are the first three values you must build from the foundation of your business that will hold you up 
under any weather in the good days and the bad days? I love this question, Anna. And, you know, number one for me is focus. Go deeper with less. When you try to do too much, you muddy your message and confuse your audience. I like to say that clarity helps to create cash, but confusion creates chaos. So, you know, just imagine walking into someone's office and all you see is clutter, 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 clutter everywhere. Do you feel at peace? Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel like you have a clear mind when you walk into that office? Or do you feel kind of, you know, a, a slight twinge of anxiety? Yes, exactly. You feel the anxiety. Why? Because there's so much mess everywhere. But if you want to go deep, you know, if you want to do that, make sure that you focus. Don't try to do too much. Do more with less. Less is more. Number two is truth. Truth. You know, Here's the truth. You know, your business won't be the same as someone else's. It won't be the same as mine. Mine won't be the same as yours. You know, as a marathon runner, I've run about 13 uh, marathons now in my life and crossed the finish line every time to God be the glory. But one of the things I have learned from running races and marathons is that you can't run someone else's race. You will burn yourself out trying to keep up a pace that you did not train for. And I saw runners that, you know, out of competition or out of trying to keep up with someone else, you know, here they are trying to keep up with someone who trained for a seven minute mile when they know good and well, they run a 14 minute mile (laughs) and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to grow slow. So if you're not growing as quickly as someone else, do not compare your backstage to somebody else's front stage, right? That's so important. You know, and another thing I learned in running is that the same people you start off with will not be the same ones you finish with all the time. You know, I remember one of the first races I ran the Los Angeles Marathon, 26.2 miles. And there were a group of us. Oh my goodness. Everyone was so excited to run this race. And we were all together. um, And they had appointed me as the pace leader. So I was, um, you know, I was leading a group of runners because I was able to keep a steady pace throughout the race. And, you know, the same people that started with me in those first couple miles and all that excitement. When I looked around me, you know, maybe there were about 30 of us all running together, you know, miles one through five or one through 10. But I looked around me around when we got to the messy middle, I mean, the really hard part. And those of you that are runners know what I'm talking about. You hit that wall (laughs) when you're running a race, you know, right around mile 16 or 18. I mean, it gets hard. Yes, it gets harder before that, Trust me, but it gets really hard when you're right there. You know, you know, you've come too far to turn back now, but you are seriously questioning why you started this race in the beginning. And I remember, my goodness, it was right around mile 18 or 19 that year. I looked around me and those same 30 people had dwindled down to maybe about seven The same people that you start with, who you think will be with you the entire race, won't be the same ones you finish with. As we began to cross the finish line, there were more uh, people that began to come along our group and we ended up finishing stronger at about a hundred people in the group because more people began to come along side. So just keep doing what you are doing and know that when you are weak, someone will carry you. You've got prayers. That's, that's what makes us different. You know, we are keeping God first in our businesses. We are keeping God first in our lives. And you know, some people may downplay that. Some people may think that's not necessary or not important. Guess what? You stand for truth anyway. You stand for integrity anyway. And that's number three, integrity. Honor your word. Always, always honor your word, right? That's so important. And be true to who you are. Don't let business success and visibility and this and an ego and anything else, do not let it change who you are. You know 
who helped get you here, right? It was nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God. Can you hear the passion in my voice? (laughs) Because I know it's only by his grace and his goodness. Yes, we may plant the seed, but he sends the rain and all the glory goes back to him. I am so passionate about helping entrepreneurs to remember their why and to remember to honor God in the process. We've got to do that because so many people are drifting away from their core in order to satisfy others. And you'll never make everybody happy, but you've got to be true to who you are. You know, and speaking of people that will help you along the race, I remember one specific marathon I ran. This is probably number number 12. I think it was number 12. And as I was running, there was a, there was a young boy. He was probably about maybe 12 or 13 years old. And I was just getting ready to approach mile 25. So if you know anything about marathons, you know, it's 26.2 miles. And when you get to mile 25, you are not looking back. You're putting on the speed. You're trying to hurry up and cross that finish line so you can be done. (laughs) But uh, there was this young boy, you know, about 12 or 13 years old, may have been a little bit older, but out of the side of my eye, I saw as I was running to the left of me, I see him collapse literally collapse. Uh, His legs just gave out from underneath him and he couldn't keep going. And, you know, even though mile 26.2 was right ahead of me, I knew that I could not keep going with that young man falling out. So I I made a beeline over to where he was and kind of checked on him, make sure he was okay. And as I stopped, another runner stopped. And another runner stopped (laughs) and another runner stopped. And we all together, then this strong man came along who was running and picked this boy up, put him over his shoulder. And we all, those of us who stopped, maybe about 12 of us, we all ran across the finish line together. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, and I think of my mastermind, those of you who are in my mastermind, I'm giving you a shout out right now. I'm thinking of you right now because I think about that is how we do life together. We pick each other up when someone else gets weak, when someone else falls, when someone else stumbles, when someone else doesn't have the kind of sales that they needed or that they hope for, or when someone else is feeling like, why am I doing all this business? I'm tired. Tired, I want to give up. But you know what? When you are tired, someone will come along and carry you, my friend. You are carried, you are loved, and you need to know that you're not in this alone. So those are some of the questions. I I also want to dive into um, some thoughts that I had about a membership site. Um, You know, a lot of people now are wanting to uh, build membership sites, you know, and basically what that means is where you are coaching instead of just one to one, you are coaching or you are teaching one to many. And, you know, it's so important that you realize that, you know, that kind of program will take a lot of hard work, grit, determination, all of that. And I I always tease entrepreneurs and I say, you know what, for anybody who buys buys your product, make sure that you let them know that this is going to require a hefty dose of the momentum theorem, meaning that it's going to take focused intensity over time. Over time, you know, do do not sign up for this program if you're expecting, you know, to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next, you know, three days. Not gonna happen. (laughs) Right? You've got to be realistically optimistic. And it just amazes me how many people aren't that. But remember that it's gonna take focused intensity over time that when multiplied by God ultimately equals unstoppable momentum. So I want to leave you with this. And this was um, something that I wrote and it's just coaching 101. I'm doing a series of coaching 101s from Lady J. And this is what today says. If you're working a job that you don't particularly love, don't discount that place. Instead, choose to see it as an opportunity for your character to be shaped molded and refined with excellence. 
Too many people complain about not loving their job when they don't realize that it's in doing the mundane work first that helps you get to where you ultimately want to be. One of the things my pastor says is that, you know what? You've got to help build someone else's dream before God will help make your dream come true. You've got so many people now who, you know, they want to skip all the necessary requirements that it takes to build character, to build perseverance, to build integrity, to help build other people's dreams. No, don't discount that place. Realize, you know, just like Joseph, Joseph was in the pit, you know, but he went from the pit to the palace because he had such a good attitude. And not only that, but because the hand of God was truly on his life. So know that you are being shaped, my friend. You may be in the fiery furnace right now, but you are being shaped. You are being molded. You are being refined in the refiner's fire with excellence. And sooner than later, you're going to come out of there shining, hallelujah, like pure gold, right? Ah, I love it. Listen, if you have a question that you'd like me to address about your business as you're growing and your life, be sure to head on over to Giovanna.com forward slash podcast and you can submit a question right there. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a review on iTunes as it helps so many other people around the world that we are reaching around the world you all. I'm so grateful from Greece to Africa, to China, to Uganda, to all over. Thank you. I say thank you for taking the time to listen every week. And my prayer is that something has been said to help propel your life and your business to a completely different level. My friend, remember where God guides, God provides and where God directs, God protects. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show at www.javana.com.